Yes, I am aware someone else made this video already, with the exact same title. I don't care, this video will go much more in depth. So sit back, drink gummy breast milk and relax. Really? You think you can just uh, do that? F*** off, Sopa, we're not copying a year and doing a little gay sketch in the middle of the video. Oh, sorry. Four times ago we talked about bad units, and the comment section was a joy to read. People agreed, disagreed, disagreed in long form, and gave a very lukewarm... Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. So, this time we will talk about the complete opposite. I will not give a definitive answer to the question in the title. I will offer arguments for four operators, and then you may come to your own conclusion. Let me know in the comments, maybe you think the best one isn't even one of these four. If you have eyes and you look at the thumbnail, the four operators in question are Sutra, Chenalter, Backpipe and Ling. Keep in mind this is assuming they are level 90 and M3. Let's start with... She needs no introduction, but I will introduce her anyways. She's an arts guard and her skill tree is Twilight, not to be confused with Twilight or Twilight. It recovers all HP, gives her attack plus 330%, attack range plus 2, attack count plus 3, and max HP plus 5000. It has unlimited duration, but will deplete her HP over time. I know it sounds like a grocery list of things prohibited by the Geneva Convention, but in short, it means she deals a lot of damage and won't die very easily. The skill also has an SP cost of 5, which not only means she can be heli-dropped, it also means that she can easily bypass CC risks that increase the SP requirement by a percentage, like the one we have in the CC9 permanent map. This is coupled with her talent 2, Remnant Ash, making her immortal for 8 seconds, after receiving little damage. Because apparently Hypergriff didn't notice with Spectre that immortal operators completely break the game. In addition, she also has her talent 1, Molten Flame, that allows her to ignore 20 resistance. All this synergizes to create a machine of death that is probably single-handedly causing global warming in Terra. Her skill 1 is very decent too, and her skill 2 is also good, but they get overshadowed by skill 3 like your sibling that your parents love more. In short, she has a lot of unga boonga damage, very, very high versatility thanks to the uh, low SP cost and being a melee unit, meaning you can drop her on the boss. She is also immortal, so uh, for at least 8 seconds she will tank anything. She ignores 20 resistance by default, and the other two skills are also good. However... She is reliant on the redeployment timer, meaning you won't see her for a while after using her, and she suffers from increased redeployment time risks. This also makes her quite DP expensive to use multiple times. She can't hit flying enemies, she doesn't give other squad members any benefits, her talents and skills are purely selfish, benefiting only herself. She requires potential 3 to reach her full potential. Overall, Sutra is a pure death dealer. Her kit doesn't do much else if not make her do more damage. It makes up for a lack of utility with just pure pain to the enemies. You don't need utilities if everything in a 10 km radius is dead. 
everybody's favorite altar, and the Hypergriffs attempt to see if they can get away with scummy money grab banners. They found out they can't. Shumi, but in a swimsuit, may have a really stupid name, like what the fuck is a Holang Day, but she is very good. She is a spread shooter sniper, and her skill tree is Holiday Storm, which is also a dumb name. It doubles her attack, attacks deal damage twice, the trait effect is always applied, it expands her range, it lowers enemy movement speed by almost half, and shreds their defense by 220. The skill works with the ammo system. She has 32, but uses 2 per attack, so 16. Meaning it ends when the ammo does, and it can be deactivated at any time. In addition, her talent 1, Frugality, or Scavenger from Call of Duty, gives her and all ammo-based snipers a 20% chance to not consume ammo on attacks. But this also implies the existence of ammo cringe snipers. You may be noticing a theme, at least one of the talents synergizes wonderfully with the strongest skill, and said skill does a lot of things at once, and all of them are medieval torture devices that Shrouded Hand would make a video about. Her skill 1 is situationally useful for auto-deploys, and skill 2 is just useless since it's skill 3 but worse. It's only really useful in roguelike. In short, she also has a lot of Unga Bunga caveman damage. Her skill 3 also helps other operators. The uh, minus 220 defense can be exploited by any physical damage dealing operator. Her talent 1 also helps other ammo based snipers, mainly Ash skill 2. She is not bound by redeployment timers, her uptime is better than Sutra. She has a wide range. Being ammo based and deactivatable, the skill is much more convenient to use. Keep in mind, deactivating it sooner also means it will be ready again sooner when another threat comes. There is no limit on how many enemies she can hit, just everyone in range, because f*** them and everyone around them. She does not require potentials to reach her full potential. She is a sniper, so she is very useful in SSS for her relief buff. However, her talent, while very good, is RNG, and one-fifth isn't that big of a chance, the RNG will screw over auto-deploys. She has a high DP cost and slow attack speed. She isn't a melee unit, meaning she can't be used to block enemies in most stages. While her range is horizontally wide, it lacks verticality, which can be a problem for a ranged unit. Her skill 1 and skill 2 are very mid meaning she is not very good until E2. With an SP cost of 55 and a starting SP of 33, she cannot be heli dropped in most situations. She is a limited operator. Right now, the only reliable way to get her is to save up 300 rolls and spark. That is 180,000 orundum. Overall, Shotgun isn't as good of a damage dealer as Sutra, mainly because minus 220 defense isn't as good as minus 20 resistance, due to how damage is calculated. However, she makes up for it with much more utility and comfort of use. Once upon a time, Bagpipe was the trad wife of the game. The girl you could build a traditional nuclear family with. 
Then the skin made her a prostitute, but that's beside the point. Some of you may be wondering why Bugpipe is even here. Unlike the other three, she doesn't have balance damage or other game-breaking stuff. Well, I'd argue that Bugpipe's advantages are more subtle. Lots of small things that together add up to a potential best operator in the game. This time, the strong part of the operator isn't a skill, but her talent. Her talent to martial tradition gives all vanguards 6 additional SP on their deployment, 8 at potential 5. This talent is further buffed by her level 3 module, that makes Bugpipe specifically gain another 4 SP, for a total of 10 or 12. The module also makes her gain 2 DP per kill and refund all DP cost when retreating, instead of half. Also, the module artwork shows that these are banned shells that she's using, making Bugpipe an actual war criminal. Uh, that's all, I just uh, wanted to mention it. I cannot overestimate how incredibly valuable this talent is. It makes entire strategies possible. It works even if you don't deploy Bagpipe at all, and it translates into instant Myrtle. Of course, Elysium and Silich also get a massive buff from this. It pretty much completely nullifies any and all DP problems. If you have Bugpipe and the Flag Bearers, you can deploy the whole ass team at the start of the stage. Her Talent 1, Precise Reloading, makes her Gunlands attack for 130% damage and strike an additional target 25% of the time. This talent isn't as good as the other, nowhere close, but it's still quite good and valuable, especially when used with skill 2. And about the skills, don't think Bugpipe's talent is the only thing that's strong here. Her skills are also very nice. Skill 2 is High Impact Assault. It doubles her attack, and it deals damage twice. It has an SP cost of 4, and can store 3 charges. Let me remind you, at potential 5 and with a level 3 module, she gets all 3 charges on deployment, instantly. While this is very simple in concept, it is still a very strong sustained damage skill. Her burst damage skill is skill 3, Locked Breach Burst. See, it even has burst in the name. At an SP cost of 40 and an initial SP of 25, or 37 in optimal conditions, it slows her attack speed, gives her plus 1 block, attack and defense plus 120%, and attacks hit 3 times in a row. This skill is also very simple, but it's also very good. This joke has been done to death, but Bugpipe really puts the guard in vanguard. She can boss kill with this skill. And her skill 1... It's a Swift Strike Gamma, what were you expecting? In short, honestly, the kit explains itself. I don't need to tell you why it's good, but I will anyways. She has an amazing talent that can carry entire runs. It makes Myrtle even better. She nullifies DP costs for other operators, so she works very well with Chum di Holunkum and Ling. Her talent 1 isn't as strong as the other, but it's still a very nice thing to have. Her module is very good. Refunding all DP when retreated is very valuable, especially with risks that increase the P cost, because she will give you back the increased DP cost. 
in uh, ideal conditions, both her skill 1 and skill 3 can be heli dropped. Her skill 2 is a very good skill for sustained damage. Her skill 3 is a very good skill for burst damage, makes her very tanky and she can even boss kill sometimes. Being able to attack multiple times so often means she's also a pretty alright counter to the invitation to wine enemies. She is a vanguard, so she can be used for the Irene Cheese in Stationary Security Service. However, she really, really needs that potential 5. Not only will you have to get Bagpipe, you will have to try and get her 4 more times. And... And that's it, really. I can't in good faith propose other downsides without making up some very minor thing. Overall, Bagpipe is an extremely good unit that has no real glaring downside. If Sutra is the pure DPS and the Chumster is the utility DPS mix, then Bagpipe is the pure utility with a solid DPS to boot. You really can't go wrong with Bagpipe. Blue Woman Jumpscare. Here is Link, the least mid of the Dragon Sisters. She is also probably getting a skin soon after this video goes up. Ling also doesn't have balanced DPS like Sutra and Chumimin. Like Bugpipe, her main appeal is the massive utility she provides, being the first actually good summoner. Because sure, you may have seen videos of Magallan soloing stages, but this doesn't mean that she is good for the average player. Ling solos stages and is very approachable for the average player. You don't need to play 5D chess with multi-dimensional time travel to use her. The uh, important part is uh, skill tria, to remain oneself. Yeah, get used to uh, pretentious writing with her. Passively, the summons can be deployed on melee tiles, and uh, if there are any other summons within their attack range, they will polymerization into a super summon. The active effect on an SP cost of 40 is doubling the attack and defense of Ling and the Chonkers. The Chonkers also deal 20% of Ling's attack as arts damage in the four adjacent tiles. But uh, this skill wouldn't be strong if the summons weren't strong too. So let's get to them. While the normal Thunderer is also formidable, let's focus on the Chonker. These Chonkers have 7214 HP, 1481 attack, they deal arts damage and uh, the unfused ones don't, 771 defense and 20 resistance. They also block 4 and attack all blocked enemies. In short, with the level 3 module, you have 3 Madrox that block 4, do AoE damage and deal Earth damage, because the Choker's stats are very similar to Madrox. See, this is how you make summoners good, you just make them summon Madrox. However, they cost a lot of DP to make, and take up two deployment slots each. But these two things aren't really a problem, even just Myrtle solves the DP problem, and the Chonkers are very much strong enough to make up for the deployment slots they take up. About the module, it's literally mandatory. It gives her 3 more summons to hold, reduces their deployment costs to 18, gives the summons more stats, and lets you have 3 big boy dragons. With a low level module, you can only have 2 chonkers and 1 little fella. Her talent 1, Lantern Lit, Phi Dream Soth, which uh, sounds like a Wattpad fanfiction title, simply states she can hold 5 summons without the module. 
Her talent to her, so is great in order to whine, gives Ling 3 SP and plus 3% attack, stacking up to 5 times, every single time one of her summons leaves the field. This also includes leaving the field because it was fused into a chonker. Her skill 1 and skill 2 are... Uh, alright. Uh, they're not bad, they're just uh, overshadowed massively by skill 3. In short, her greatest strength is only occupying one slot in the squad. She is the queen of trust farms. This also allows her to bypass CC risks that limit the squad size. And about CC, she is very good for dailies. The summons can deal with the risks in those very easily. Blocking 4 is a lot, especially with AoE damage. Unlike other summoners, she is very easy to play. You can just deploy chonkers in lanes that look important and most of the time it will work if you aren't completely brain dead. The effect on the adjacent tiles of skill 3 can technically hit flying enemies too. It's not very good, but it can. The Chonkers have stats comparable to Maldrock. She gains attack and SP when simply playing her normally. She is a supporter, so she is very useful in stationary security service. However, she needs a lot of investment to reach her full potential, E2 at level 60 plus and level 3 module. She gets f***ed hard by deployment limit risks. While the Chonker's stats are impressive, they cannot be healed if not through uh, other means like HP regen, and they don't have any self-sustain to make up for it. While the utility is amazing and the Chonkers have great stats, Ling doesn't have high burst damage like the previous three candidates. Ling is also a limited unit, which is even harder to obtain compared to Chumin Chuman, because she only runs in CNY banners once a year, and you still need the 300 rolls to spark. Overall, Ling is defined by many as a game-breaking unit, she can solo, like every stage, the Chonkers have absurd stats, she is a wonder in CC, she is a wonder in stationary security service, you can't really ask for more in a unit. So you may be wondering, after this long video, who do I think is the best operator? I spent an outrageously long amount of time talking about these four, so it is only fair that I give you my opinion. I think that the best operator is easily, without a question, Gummy. Hear me out! Her skill 1 provisions restores the HP of a nearby ally by 160% of Gummy's attack on a 4 SP requirement. I don't think I need to tell you that this is the best healing in the game. Her skill 2 is terrible. Uh, I have been playing this game for 3 years, I have used Gummy in every single clear, and I have used this skill exactly twice. But it was in CC, so this is the best skill 2 in the game. And can you look at these stats? She is the best tank in the game. She even has the best module in the game. Even Silvergun said it. Don't go check, trust me on this one, okay? He said it. Don't go check. In short, she is the best, just the best. She can solo every stage in the game. If your gummy can't do it, you are using her wrong. 
She is the best tank. She has the best healing. She has the best damage. She has the best crowd control with the stun talent. She has the best skin because it shows her feet. And she has the best lore. I love cannibalism. However... <laughs> I'm just joking, she doesn't have a downside, she's perfect in every aspect! Uh, <laughs> uh, well, thank you for watching, uh, sub and like and do all the algorithm things, uh, I mean, you watched up to this point, it must mean you liked the video and you liked me, unless you started writing a hate comment at the start and you're still not done. Uh, bye bye.